day is are you okay day so are you guys okay i hope you are to make sure you support each other even you don't see them face to face text them ask them say you know are you okay today's lesson is sample proportions kiko can you just read the information for us a population proportion p is the number of people or objects in the population that have a certain characteristic as a fraction of the total population. For example, if 2,745 seagulls in a population of 9,232 living on the central coast have red eyes, then the population proportion is given by P equals 2741 over 9232. Do I keep going? Yep. When the population is large, we usually take a large sample from the population and assume that the sample population P is a good estimate of the population proportion. Thank you, Kiko, for that. And sample proportions formula is here. P hat equals X over N. N is all the sample size and X is the value of binomial random variable X. So let's have a look at the next one. Rebecca, can you read the next, please? The value of P equals to X over N. No, value of a P hat equals. The value of P hat equals to X over N is different for each sample randomly selected from the population. These sample proportions form a discrete probability distribution called the sampling distribution of proportions. Oh, thank you. Okay, example 13. Antonina, can you read it for us? A company produces batteries and does annual checks to see what proportion of them are defective. In the last three years, the number of defective batteries was as follows. Year one, 31 defective out of a sample of 1,500. Year two, 19 defective out of a sample of 1,100. And year three, 45 defective out of a sample of 2,000. Find the sample proportion for each of the years as a percentage to one decimal place. Use these results to state an average percentage of defective batteries for this company. Thank you. What do we have to do? It just basically to use the formula of P hat equals X over N. So what is my X? What is my N? Well, that's my N, the sample, total sample numbers. And this is what X. So if you do that and in answer in a one decimal place, we will have something like this, 2.1%, 1.7%. 2.3%. Next one, use these results to state an average percentage. So what do we do when we do average? We add it all together and divide it by three, don't we? And when you do that, you'll get 2.03%. So roughly 2%. That's a rather easy. So therefore, the company has around 2% defective batteries. Katie, can you read it for us? Sample size in the normal distribution. We can use the binomial distribution to explore the sampling distribution of proportions p hat using different values of p and n. Since the calculations become more difficult with larger sample sizes, we can use technology to help draw graphs of sample distributions. Here is an example using a spreadsheet. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to use X, but we're not going to do it now, but I'll, I've actually done it. So all this instruction, if you follow it, you will get something like this. I've already done it for you. Basically, what we, we are doing is that, you know, the formula NCR times P to the power of R brackets 1 minus P, which is a Q, failure. P is success. 1 minus P is failure, which is Q to the power of N minus R is the probability. This is what we can do, not manually doing it. We can use the technology to do it because sometimes it's really hard to do so many data and find the probability of that. It's going to be really tricky. But if we can use technology, it's a lot easier. So basically all these is what we've done here. Okay, this formula, that's all. Example 15 is what we suppose practice using technology so i am not going to do this one i'm hoping when you have time at home do it so each one will be like this okay oh that's that's a big one but i want you to have a look at them though so when you look at the um the results when the sample is n equals 10 
n equals 25, n equals 50, obviously, the more the, your, the sample numbers, the results will be more like bell curve, isn't it? Because they're all stuck together and the, the bar, the column will be so thin and it will form a line of bell curve. Okay, that's what we call central limit theorem. All right, the mean, I'm not gonna go through it too much on this. I just want you to have quickly have a look at it. Variance the same. Example 16, Joanne, can you read it up for us? Find the mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling's distribution with AP equals 0.4 and N equals 50. B, P equals 0.9 and N equals 125. Excellent, thank you. So you've got to do three things here, okay? So make sure you answer the question on this one. So the part A, the P equals 0.4, N equals 50, and we need to find three things, the starting with the, the mean as a mu, and variance and standard deviation. The first thing is mean, which is the our P, and that's 0.4, it's given, and a variance, is the one that we're gonna to have to use, the formula. But we got P, therefore we can find the Q, which is one minus P and all over N, and N is 50. So that's what we're gonna get. And of course, standard deviation is the square root of variance because the variance is a square of standard deviation. So that's what you're gonna get, okay? So same thing happens with part B. Everything starts from min and then you will get the variance, and then you will get the standard deviation. I want you to carefully have a look at how they set up their working out. I think it's very important to practice setting up the solutions step by step. Please, please use roughs. I want that roughs to be a small uh, habit for you, okay? So make sure you have a bit of a habit to do. Now let's have a look at Example 17, Lorena, can you read it out for us? The incidence of asthma in a particular population is 21%. A sample of 89 people was taken from this population. A, I, how many people in this sample would you expect to have asthma? I, I, find the sample proportion P hat as a fraction. B, assuming that sample proportion proportion is approximately normally distributed, what is the probability that the percentage of people with asthma is this sample size, less than 10%, more than 30%? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so first one, I think part A is not a tricky question at all. How many people we expecting to have asthma? It's 21%, it already you know, said in the question, and there's 89 people, so it's obviously, 19 people, we can't say 18.69 people. So we do round it up, expect about roughly 19 people. And part two, that sample proportion P hat is yeah, X over N. So we got that X from the part one and the total doesn't change. It's 89. So, and then we just leave it as a fraction. So the 19 over 89. Okay, the next one, so what do we do? Less than 10%. I want to write it like in terms of probability. Less than 10%. Okay, that's what we are actually trying to find. And then the other one is more than 30%. What kind of formula do we need to have before we can actually find the probability? So the question says, what is the probability? that the percentage of people with asthma is this sample is less than 10% and more than 30%. We use Z-score. To find probabilities, we use Z-scores. Okay, so that's very important. Think of it, probability, Z-scores. Who can remember Z-score formula? X minus mu over standard deviation. Yep, excellent, good job. What do we need? We need X, we need mu, we need standard deviation. First, mu is P, which is 21%, which is 0 0.21. And what else we need? The variance, P 
P times Q, which is 1 minus P, and N, 0 0.21, 1 minus 0 0.21 over N is 89. And put that in your calculator, you will probably will get something like 0 0.001864. And therefore, is square root of 0.001864. And then you will get 0 0.04317. What's x? x is here. 0 0.1. That's my x. Z equals x is 0 0.1 minus mu is 0 0.21. And it's 0 0.04317. Put that in, you will get negative, isn't it? Negative 2.55. So it's a below zero, okay? Below average for Z score. Um, you have to use the table. If you do that, you will get Z is less than. And your value will be. From the table, it'll be 0 0.0054. Okay, so that means the probability of x is less than 10% is 0 0.0054. So the probability that the fewer than 10% of this sample of people has asthma is 0 0.0054. Juliet, what do we need to do for? more than 30 percent do you think that's cool and then we need to use the table the p success 0 0.21 correct 0 0.21 and i'm going to put x equals 0 0.3 and now i'll have to find the variance it's the same as before we've done it from the uh, previous question now we have to convert that into z score x is 0 0.3 Right, 0 0.21 over 2.08. This is a Z score, isn't it? So I would say Z is less than 2.08. And you use the table, you get 0 0.9812. Z score is bigger than 2.08 because it's more than. So it's going to be 1 minus P of Z score is less than. I think uh, if you look at the previous lesson, when we do something is, it's supposed to be less than. Everything is has to be less than, but if it's more than, you, you will find the less than, you'll take it away from the one. We've done this. So when you do that, one, eight, eight. So the probability that more than 30% of this sample of people has asthma is at 0 0.0188. Well, that's it. You've done the whole chapter. Well done, guys.